Hello all, welcome back. Till now we were discussing about different types of hydrographs. We have discussed about uh, unit hydrograph, direct runoff hydrograph, S hydrograph and also instantaneous unit hydrograph. Today we are going to look into synthetic unit hydrograph. From the name itself it is clear that it is the unit hydrograph which is artificially constructed. So why do we want to go for synthetic unit hydrographs? Let us look into that. Unit hydrograph developed using rainfall and stream flow data on a catchment applies only to that particular catchment and also for the point on the stream where the stream flow data were measured. While we were designing the unit hydrograph, we have seen that we need to have the effective rainfall having a particular duration and also corresponding stream flow from the gauging station. So, the way in which we were developing the unit hydrograph was in need of rainfall data and the stream flow data. So, the unit hydrograph this derived will be applicable to that particular location only. Sometimes we will be having data at different different location, but in majority of the cases we will not be having stream flow data for all the locations corresponding to different points in a stream or river. In such cases, we have to make use of the data which is available to us or sometimes the entire catchment will be engaged. So, we will be considering the data from the neighboring station which is hydrologically and climatically similar to this particular catchment. So, these kind of unit hydrograph developed by using rainfall and stream flow data from a particular gauging station will not be applicable to other locations. That is it is not applicable for ungauged catchments. In such cases we can opt for synthetic unit hydrograph. There are different procedures for developing synthetic unit hydrographs. So, those procedures can be utilized for constructing the unit hydrograph for the ungauged catchment. That is for other locations on the stream in the same watershed or for nearby watersheds of a similar characteristic. What we are going to do? We are going to make use of the principle of synthetic unit hydrograph approach for developing unit hydrographs for the ungauged catchments or in the same catchment where the stream flow data is not available. There are different methods to develop synthetic unit hydrographs. Those are classified into three types. Type 1 is based on watershed characteristics and developing relationships among geomorphology characteristics and hydrograph characteristics. That is for a particular catchment, we will be having different types of stream networks. And also based on the hydrologic characteristics, we will be getting different types of hydrographs at the outlet of the catchment. So, here in this type 1 approach, what we are doing, we are going to develop the relationship between the geomorphology characteristics and the hydrograph characteristics. Because when we were discussing about the stream flow hydrograph, that time itself it is explained that the shape of the hydrograph depends on the shape of the catchment, characteristics of the catchment. Depending on the characteristics of the catchment, we will be having the hydrograph with the sharp peak or flat peak, all those depends on the characteristics of the catchment. So, here in this type 1 approach for the construction of synthetic unit hydrograph, we are going to make use of the geomorphological characteristics and the hydrograph characteristics. Geomorphologic characteristics includes area, length of the stream etc. Different geomorphologic characteristics we have already discussed while discussing about stream networks, drainage density, stream density etc comes under that. And coming to hydrograph characteristics, we will make use of peak flow rate, base time, time to peak, all these characteristics can be incorporated. There are different synthetic unit hydrographs developed based on this principle. Some examples are 
Snyder's synthetic unit hydrograph and Gray's synthetic unit hydrograph. Now coming to type 2, it is based on dimensionless unit hydrograph that is by using data from similar catchments. We are having an ungauged catchment for which we need to develop the unit hydrograph. So, here we are going to develop some kind of dimensionless relationships by making use of the data from the neighboring catchment for which the stream flow and rain flow data are available. The example for this type 2 synthetic unit hydrograph is SES dimensionless synthetic unit hydrograph. Now, coming to type 3, it is based on models of catchment storage. We know whenever a storm is occurring, different storage components needs to be satisfied. After that only, we will be getting the runoff at the outlet of the catchment. So, here in type 3, we are making use of the catchment storage concepts and the examples related to these are Nash model and Clark's model. So, here in this course, we are going to discuss about Snyder's synthetic unit hydrograph and SCS dimensionless synthetic unit hydrograph. In this lecture, we will look into Snyder's synthetic unit hydrograph and in the next lecture, we will move on to the SCS dimensionless unit hydrographs. So, let us start with the type 1 synthetic unit hydrograph that is Snyder's synthetic unit hydrograph. Snyder developed synthetic relations among geomorphological characteristics and hydrograph characteristics. We know already that while explaining in the previous slide that is the type 1 category deals with the development of relationship between the geomorphologic characteristics and the hydrograph characteristics. So, Snyder's method is based on that and he proposed the following concepts that is under this topic we need to have idea about three types of unit hydrographs. First one is required unit hydrograph, then standard unit hydrograph and derived unit hydrograph. Three types of unit hydrographs are proposed here. Required unit hydrograph, standard unit hydrograph and derived unit hydrograph. All are unit hydrographs only but depending on the requirements different names have been given. First one is required unit hydrograph. As the name indicates, this is the synthetic unit hydrograph required for that particular location of specific duration. This is the synthetic unit hydrograph of required duration. And uh, related to required unit hydrograph, four characteristics of a unit hydrograph for a given effective rainfall duration are considered. Snyder considered four different characteristics of the unit hydrograph and based on that the synthetic unit hydrograph has been derived. The synthetic unit hydrograph which is going to derive for an ungauged catchment is known as the required unit hydrograph. The four characteristics which are considered we can explain with the help of the figure. We are going to plot the unit hydrograph here. Here in this case, you need to understand the y-axis is not discharge, it is discharge per unit area and along the x-axis we are having the time and we are going to consider an effective rainfall pulse which is having a duration of T subscript capital R. Whenever we are going to develop a unit hydrograph, we used to consider an effective rainfall which is having a specific duration capital D that duration we are considering or we are denoting as TR, T subscript capital R. Capital R is representing the required unit hydrograph. Corresponding to this effective rainfall with duration TR, we will be having a response from the catchment. Since 1 centimeter rainfall is considered, this is a unit hydrograph. Out of the four different characteristics, first one is basin lag represented by TPR. Basin lag is the time difference between the centroid of the excess rainfall hydrograph and the unit hydrograph peak. So, this definition of basin lag we have already discussed earlier while discussing the components of hydrograph. 
Bayesian lag is nothing but the time difference between the centroid of the effective rainfall hydrograph and the centroid of the direct runoff hydrograph. But it is very difficult to determine the centroid of hydrograph that is why majority of cases we will be considering the basin lag as the difference between the centroid of the effective rainfall hydrograph and the peak of the runoff hydrograph that is here in this case peak of the unit hydrograph that can be marked like this we are considering the centroid of the effective rainfall hydrograph and the peak of the unit hydrograph this is represented by TPR. TP is the notation used for basin lag and subscript R is representing corresponding to required unit hydrograph. Second characteristic is that peak discharge per watershed area that is small QPR. We are not talking about the capital Q. Small QPR is the value corresponding to discharge per unit area that is capital Q divided by the area of the catchment. So, the unit corresponding to that will be meter cube per second kilometer square. Meter cube per second is a unit of discharge per area of the catchment it will be kilometer square. So, the unit of small q which we are considering is meter cube per second kilometer square. That is what we are plotting along the y axis. That can be marked in the figure. This is our QPR. Third characteristic is that base time TB in hours. Base time is considered as the time elapsed between the beginning of the runoff and the cessation of the runoff. That can be marked in the graph. This is our time base or base time represented by small t subscript b. Then one more characteristic is there that is related to width. Width of the unit hydrograph, this is also in hours. Two widths we are considering that is corresponding to 50 percentage of the peak discharge which is represented by W50. So, we are having QPR here corresponding to 50 percentage of that we will be having a width represented by W50 and corresponding to 75 percentage of the peak discharge that is represented by W75. These are the four characteristics which are considered while deriving the required unit hydrograph by Snyder's method. First one is the basin lag that is the time difference between the effective rainfall hydrograph and the peak of the hydrograph. Then peak discharge per unit area. Third one is the base time and the fourth one is the widths corresponding to 50 percentage of the peak discharge and also 75 percentage of the peak discharge. If we are having all these characteristics, we can construct the unit hydrograph. So, our main idea is to find out expression for these parameters. The second terminology related to hydrograph which Schneider has proposed is standard unit hydrograph. Standard unit hydrograph is the one in which Tp is equal to 5.5 Tr. We know what is meant by Tr. Tr is the duration of the effective rainfall which we are considering and Tp is the basin lag. So, for a standard unit hydrograph this relationship should be satisfied. In a particular unit hydrograph if basin lag is equal to 5.5 times the effective rainfall duration then it can be considered as a standard unit hydrograph. We can represent it graphically that is the standard unit hydrograph having basin lag Tp is equal to 5.5 Tr. So, here we are plotting in the similar way as that of required unit hydrograph discharge per unit area is plotted along the y axis and time along the x axis and we are having the effective rainfall pulse which is having the duration given by TR. So, TR is the duration of the effective rainfall we are considering and the response from the catchment is represented by the unit hydrograph and the peak is QP and the basin lag can be represented by TP. And this hydrograph will be a standard unit hydrograph if it follows the relationship Tp is equal to 5.5 Tr. 
Now the third concept is derived unit hydrograph as the name indicates this is the unit hydrograph based on rainfall and stream flow data from a nearby similar catchment. Nearby similar catchment means the catchment which is having hydrologically and climatically similar characteristics as that of the ungauged catchment. And the data corresponding to rainfall and stream flow will be used to construct a unit hydrograph for that gauged catchment and that will be utilized for developing the coefficients of the Snyder synthetic unit hydrograph. So now let us move on to Snyder's method of synthetic unit hydrograph. According to Snyder for standard unit hydrograph Tp is equal to 5.5 Tr. Snyder conducted so many studies in different types of watersheds in the US and the areas of the watersheds were varying from 25 km square to 25,000 km square. Small catchments to larger catchments the study has been conducted and based on the study certain relationships have been formulated in the form of equations. So, for basin lag Tp Snyder suggested an equation Tp is equal to 0.75 Ct L L C to the power of 0.3 and for peak runoff the proposed equation is Qp is equal to 2.78 times Cp divided by Tp. In this Qp is the peak runoff per catchment area for the standard unit hydrograph. So, this peak runoff per catchment area we have already seen before it is having the unit of meter cube per second kilometer square. Now, CPCT here we are having coefficient CT and CP. CT is the coefficient corresponding to time and CP is the coefficient corresponding to peak runoff. So, these coefficients are derived from the gauged watersheds in the same region. For developing this synthetic unit hydrograph, we need to have a gauged catchment which is having the similar characteristics of the ungauged catchment for which we are going to develop the synthetic unit hydrograph. And here we are having a term corresponding to capital L. Capital L is representing the length of the mainstream from outlet to upstream divide line that is the length of the mainstream in kilometers that is represented by capital L that is from the upstream point from where the mainstream is starting to the outlet of the catchment that is the length of the mainstream starting from the watershed divide at the upstream point to the outlet point that is capital L. And another term LC is the LC is present in the equation corresponding to Tp that is representing the distance from the outlet to a point on the stream nearest to the centroid of the watershed area in kilometer. For a watershed we can find out which is the point corresponding to the centroid of the watershed. So, that centroidal point may not be on the mainstream. So, from that centroidal point closest point on the mainstream that is the closest point near to the centroidal point will be selected which is on the stream and the distance from that particular point to the outlet of the catchment is considered as LC. These L and LC are the geomorphological parameters of the catchment estimated using the topographic map of the area. For the catchments which we are considering that is gauge catchment and also ungauged catchment we should have the topographic map. So, if topographic map is available to us we can calculate different geomorphological characteristics. Nowadays it is very easy by making use of GIS softwares and from there we can calculate the values corresponding to L and LC in kilometers. So, here you can look at the equations corresponding to Tp and Qp again. Tp is given by 0.75 Ct LLC to the power of 0.3. LLC we can get from the topographic map but what about Ct? And coming to Qp can be calculated by using this formula. Tp we will be obtaining from this particular equation and we need to have the value corresponding to coefficient Cp. So, next step is to determine the different coefficients Cp and Ct. Estimation of coefficients Cp and Ct. 
we are having data from the nearby catchment which is climatically and hydrologically similar to the ungauged catchment. This data includes rainfall data, stream flow data and also topographic map. So, different data required from the gauge catchment are given over here. Rainfall data with particular duration, corresponding stream flow data and the topographic map corresponding to the gauge catchment. Now, coming to different steps involved in this, using the topographic map of this gauge catchment, we can calculate the length such as L and LC. After that, we can go for developing the derived unit hydrograph. Derived unit hydrograph is the unit hydrograph which is derived for the gauge catchment. We have the rainfall data and also stream flow data and based on the methods which we have discussed in previous lectures, we can develop the unit hydrograph corresponding to this gauge catchment by making use of the rainfall and stream flow data. Let the effective rainfall duration of the gauged catchment be TNR, basin lag represented by TNPR. That is TP is the term which is used for representing basin lag. So, here this is for the gauge catchment that is why we are having extra N and R is representing the required one. So, for the uh, gauge catchment basin lag is represented by TNPR. And peak runoff per catchment area is represented by QNPR. Now, if this derived unit hydrograph is representing a standard unit hydrograph, then it will be following the equation TNPR equal to 5.5 TNR. Once the unit hydrograph is developed, that is the derived unit hydrograph is there with us, we can check how much is the basin lag for that particular catchment. That is TNPR is equal to 5.5 TNR. If you are calculating the basin lag to be 5.5 times the effective rainfall duration, then it can be considered as a standard unit hydrograph. So, this derived unit hydrograph can be considered as standard unit hydrograph if it follows this relationship. So, directly we can make use of the relationship for TP and QP for developing the synthetic unit hydrograph. What we have to do? We have to put TP is equal to TNPR and QP is equal to QNPR and TP we are having represented by TNPR and QP is represented by QNPR. This is from the derived unit hydrograph if it follows the relationship related to standard unit hydrograph. So, here in this equation, we know Tp and Qp. What we can go for? We can calculate the coefficient Ct and Cp. Ct is given by Tp divided by 0.75 LLC to the power of 0.3 and Cp is given by Qp Tp divided by 2.78. If the derived unit hydrograph is following the relationship corresponding to standard unit hydrograph, we can directly make use of that formula to get the coefficients. But always it will not be following that particular relationship. That is, Tp will not be equal to 5.5 times Tr. Then what we can do? If TNPR is not equal to 5.5 TNR, then Snyder has proposed another equation for calculating basin lag given by TNPR plus TR minus TNR divided by 4. TNPR is known to us and TNR is also known to us. We do not know TP and TR. So, this can be modified a little bit by assuming that this relationship TP follows the relationship of TP is equal to 5.5 TR. Based on this, we are going to modify this equation. Slight rearrangements of the terms we are doing. So, 4 Tp is equal to 4 TNPR plus Tr minus TNR. And if this is following the standard unit hydrograph equation, then we can write Tr is equal to Tp divided by 5.5. The unit hydrograph which is derived with the known data that is for the gauge catchment is not behaving as a standard unit hydrograph. So, we need to derive the standard unit hydrograph first. So, for that from the studies conducted in different catchments, Snyder has proposed a formula 
if it is not following that particular relationship we can make use of this formula then it will be becoming standard unit hydrograph in that case tr will be equal to tp divided by 5.5 so that we are going to substitute over here for tr and we will be simplifying the equation and the equation takes the form tp is equal to 22 divided by 21 tnpr minus 5.5 divided by 21 tnr and again it can be simplified to 22 divided by 21 multiplied by tnpr minus tnr divided by 4. So, this equation can be utilized for calculating tp that is tnpr that is for the derived unit hydrograph we are having the value corresponding to tnpr and tnr this is nothing but the tr required duration of the effective rainfall and tpr is representing the basin lag by making use of this formula we can calculate the basin lag corresponding to standard unit hydrograph and if tp is calculated by using this formula we can calculate ct by making use of this formula which we have already discussed and CP can be obtained after calculating TP. So, if the derived unit hydrograph is following that particular equation for standard unit hydrograph that is TP is equal to 5.5 TR then we can assume that the derived unit hydrograph is the standard unit hydrograph. But in majority of the cases it will not be behaving like that it will not be satisfying that formula. In such cases, we have to make use of this equation which is provided by Snyder for calculating the basin lag. Once the basin lag is calculated, we can calculate the coefficient corresponding to time that is Ct. And we are having Tp, we can make use of the other formula for Cp to get the coefficient corresponding to peak discharge. Now, the estimated values of coefficient Ct and Cp for the gauge catchments are the with us. These values are assumed to be applicable for ungauge catchment for which we need to derive the synthetic unit hydrograph. By the principles which are discussed till now, we got the values corresponding to Ct and Cp. Those Ct and Cp are derived based on the hydrograph characteristics and also geomorphology characteristics of the gauge catchment. What we are going to assume that since these two catchments are having similar characteristics climatically and also hydrologically, we can assume that these coefficients can be applicable to ungauged catchment also. So, the basin lag corresponding to the ungauged catchment can be calculated by TPR is equal to 0.75 CT LLC to the power of 0.3. Here L and LC we will be getting from the topographic map of the ungauged catchment. CT we have already calculated based on the data from the gauge catchment that CT value will be utilized and the length values L and LC will be calculated from the topographic map of the gauged catchment and there also corresponding to required unit hydrograph. So, if TPR is equal to 5.5 TR that is the effective rainfall is having a duration of T subscript capital R. If this TP calculated by using the characteristics from the gauge catchment that follows this particular relationship, this thing can be considered as the standard unit hydrograph. So, the standard unit hydrograph is the required unit hydrograph. If it is not following that relationship, we need to make use of this formula for TPR and once TPR is calculated, we can get the values corresponding to peak discharge per watershed area that is QPR by using this formula QPR is equal to QPTP divided by TPR and waste time TB in hours can be calculated by using TB is equal to 5.56 divided by QPR. Now, other two characteristics which are considered are width of the unit hydrograph in hours that is at 50 percentage of the peak discharge that is represented by W50 and 75 percentage of the peak discharge represented by W75 can be calculated by using this formula given by W is equal to CWQPR to the power of minus 1.08. Same formula only the difference is in the coefficient of CW 
CW is equal to 1.224 percentage of the peak discharge and CW is equal to 2.144 50 percentage of the peak discharge. Bit we are calculating corresponding to 75 percentage of the peak discharge and also 50 percentage of the peak discharge corresponding to these separate coefficients have been given. So, the four characteristics which are considered by Snyder we are having expressions to calculate that for the required unit hydrograph. In order to reach that step we have to make use of the data corresponding to the gauge catchment. Here we are having the values corresponding to basin lag, then peak discharge per unit area, then comes the width corresponding to 75 percentage and 50 percentage of the peak discharge and base time TB. Once these data are available to us, we can plot the synthetic unit hydrograph. One thing you need to make sure that after getting the width calculation by using this formula, it should be arranged in such a way that one third of the widths are distributed before the peak and remaining two third is drawn after the peak has occurred. Once we calculate the values corresponding to basin lag, QPR, base time and the widths corresponding to 50 and 75 percentage of the peak discharge, we can construct the synthetic unit hydrograph. So, let me plot this. We are having the base time TB. Let me mark that first. TB is marked along the x axis and we can consider the value corresponding to peak discharge that can be marked in this plate. This is representing our Q now, we will drop a perpendicular from this point to the x axis and then only we can draw the widths corresponding to these discharges. How to draw these widths? It should be drawn in such a way that one third of the width should be before the peak and two thirds should come after the peak. So, W50 I can mark at this point. This is corresponding to 50 percentage of QP and the width is marked in such a way that one third of W will be coming over here and two third will be coming after the peak has occurred and this is representing our W50. And now coming to W75 similar way we will mark one third before the peak and two third after the peak. Now what we will do we will join these points with a smooth curve like this and this is our synthetic unit hydrograph proposed by Snyder. So, this is the way in which we will be developing the synthetic unit hydrograph based on the type 1 category that is finding out the relationship between the geomorphologic characteristics and the hydrograph characteristics that is you could have understood the concept. In this case from the gauge catchment we have derived the unit hydrograph and also we were having the topographic map of the gauge catchment based on those data the coefficients CP and CT determine that CP and CT applied to the gauge catchment assuming that these two catchments are hydrologically and climatically having the similar characteristics. After that the steps which we have explained here can be followed and we can find out different characteristics or the four different characteristics which are proposed by Snyder can be calculated and it can be plotted to obtain the synthetic unit hydrograph, Snyder's synthetic unit hydrograph. So, here I am winding up this topic of Snyder's synthetic unit hydrograph. The reference related to this topic is given over here. Thank you.